You've been told you have an ovarian cyst and now you're worried, could it be cancer? What do I do? Do I need surgery? I'm an OBGYN and I'm gonna break it down for you. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, author, educator, and this is the health class you didn't have in high school. And today we're talking about ovarian cysts. What are they? Do you have to have surgery for it? Could it be cancer? How do you know what questions to ask? I've got you covered, but before I do that, go ahead and like, subscribe, and turn on the bell so you never miss an upload. Okay, let's just get to it. What is an ovarian cyst? Now, a cyst, by definition, is usually a fluid-filled structure, so it's something like this in the ovary. But I do wanna say that sometimes we use the term ovarian cyst to refer to any mass in the ovary. And the technical term for a mass in the ovary or the fallopian tube next to it is something called an adnexal mass. But I'm going to refer to these things more as cysts because that's what we tend to use those terms. I want to reassure you and let you know that the job of the ovary is actually to make cysts. Yes, that's right. We often hear so much information about how a cyst equals disease and that's not the case because every month when you release an egg, that egg comes from a little cyst or a little follicle. So when you're born, you've got a bunch of these little follicles in your ovaries and every cycle a bunch of these eggs are like, pick me, pick me, pick me. And one dominant follicle gets to be the winner. That gets a little bit bigger. When you ovulate, it bursts. The little little sister follicle burst releases an egg. And hold on. Can you hear the birds chirping outside? It is a beautiful spring day. If you can't, I'm sorry you're missing that. But we're just going to go with it in this video because it's spring and I love it. Okay, so you ovulate, you release that egg. And what's left behind is a little empty cyst. And most times it just kind of gets resorbed and goes away, but sometimes things get a little crazy. So I'm going to first list all the different types of cysts or masses that are most common. That way we can just get it out of the way and then I'll jump into what the heck do we need to worry about. So first you've got a functional cyst, which is, like I said, it's the result of an egg being released and it's that leftover follicle left behind. These are often very simple appearing. They've just got a little bit of fluid. Oftentimes they cause no problems. The next type of cyst is a hemorrhagic cyst. And this is what happens when a little bit of extra bleeding happens in that follicle after that egg is released. Sometimes it can be just a little cyst filled with blood and sometimes your whole belly can fill with blood. Obviously that's an emergency, but usually that's not the case. We've also got endometriomas. These are, as it sounds like, related to the disease process endometriosis. These often look like what we call little brown or chocolate cysts, which sounds delicious, but not this kind. And it's the presence of endometriosis like lesions on the ovary that can cause a cyst and sometimes can be intensely painful. Next up, we've got cyst adenomas. There's a bunch of different varieties and flavors. I'm not gonna dive into that too much, but they range from benign, totally normal, to more concerning and pre-malignant or malignant. And there's teratomas. Have you ever seen these? And do you want me to make a whole video just about this? Because these are masses that are found in the ovary that have teeth, and hair and nails, they're like, these are like the stuff of nightmares. And it's because the reason there's all those weird different types of tissue is because they come from the cells that embryologically eventually become hair and teeth and whatnot. I remember a few surgeries taking them out well, and I wanted to like, it's so gross. But anyway, do you want me to like do a whole separate video on that? Let me know in the comments section below. Next up are abscesses. We often see these in the fallopian tubes, not the ovary themselves, but these can be the result of infections like sexually transmitted infections. There's something called a hydrosalpinx, which is a fluid collection. Again, often seen next to the ovary in the fallopian tube, but sometimes on ultrasound, you'll be told you have an ovarian cyst and actually this is what's there. And yes, cancer. So it could be cancer of the ovary itself or it could be cancer somewhere else that spread to the ovary. We call that metastatic cancer. And lastly, an ovarian cyst could be a pregnancy, something called an ectopic pregnancy, often seen in the fallopian tubes. But like I just said in the last one, sometimes they can be misdiagnosed as being from the ovary itself. And there are definitely others, but those are like our heavy hitters of, of cysts and things that we see in the ovaries. Okay, are you freaked out? Stay tuned. It's going to be okay. I promise most of these things end up just fine. So you've been told you have a cyst. Maybe you went in with pain and you had an ultrasound and that's how it was found. Or you were getting an ultrasound or, you know, on exam, somebody felt something and then got imaging and they saw it. So you've been told you have it. What do we do now to figure out if we're worried about something like cancer? Or even if we're not worried, but we need to figure out what to do next. This may sound very basic, but we need to take a good history. Are you having pain? Do you have a history of this happening before? Do you have other diagnoses that might make us think, hmm, 
hmm, could this be an endometrioma, like endometriosis? Do you have other symptoms that could be worrisome, like bloating, or you eat and you get full very quickly? Those are more worrying signs for ovarian cancer, but also signs of other things too, like irritable bowel syndrome. So I don't want you to freak out if you've got those symptoms, but we do need to know about them. Do you have absent or irregular periods? Could you be pregnant? We also want to know your family history. So is there a family history of ovarian cancer or breast cancer or colon cancer or cancer of the uterus? Because all of these can be part of syndromes that make you more likely to have cancer of the ovary. Next up, we'll want to do an exam. So let's just say something was seen on ultrasound and now we want to do an exam to get a better understanding of this cyst. Things that might make us a little more concerned is if we can feel the cyst or the mass and it feels very hard and irregular. Things that are more reassuring is if it feels smooth or simple, or if we can't feel it at all. Next up, we may consider getting some blood work if we're not exactly sure what's going on. And this can include testing for something called serum markers. You may have heard of one called CA-125. When that's elevated in people who've gone through menopause, that does make us concerned for ovarian cancer. But there are other markers as well. We may also do tests for infections like gonorrhea or chlamydia if we think this could be related to an infectious process. And based on all of this, Sometimes we can assign a score, which helps us think about level of risk of how concerned we are that this could be malignant or cancer, or should have surgery to come out, or we feel more reassured we can leave it alone or we can just watch and wait. Okay, so you might be saying, Dr. Jen, just tell me what gets us worried and what I should be concerned about. And I'm just gonna be straight with you. If you are postmenopausal, especially if you're over the age of 55, that does make you more likely to be in the category of being at risk for ovarian cancer. Can it happen in younger people? Absolutely. But thankfully, ovarian cancer is not super common and not very common in people who have not yet gone through menopause. We also get a little more concerned if it's over 10 centimeters. So. I'm an OBGYN, I measure everything with my fingers. 10 centimeters is a little bit bigger than the width of my fingers, and that might seem enormous. And you might say, Dr. Jen, you're telling me you're not worried if it's nine centimeters in my abdomen and we're just gonna like let it ride? I'll get to that. But if it's over 10 centimeters, that does make us a little more concerned. And really the biggest thing that I look at is what does it look like on ultrasound? So things that get us a little worried is if it has solid components. It's not just a, you know, a nice happy little cyst that looks like a water balloon. So if there's any solid components that could make us think like tumor cells, if there's any projections, we call those little papillary projections. If it looks very irregular, that makes us a little concerned. And we also get worried if we see other stuff in your belly. So if we see a lot of fluid in your belly, that could make us think of something called ascites, which could be related to cancer. Now keep in mind, you could have a ruptured corpus luteum and have a hemorrhagic cyst and we see blood on your belly, but oftentimes these look a little bit different. Okay, let's, let's be positive. What makes us reassured? And I would want to pass along that reassurance to you. So it's a very simple appearing fluid filled cyst. So think of like a nice happy little water balloon, meaning we don't see any solid areas. We don't see anything else that's concerning. It doesn't have a lot of separations or what we call septations and ideally less than 10 centimeters. That makes us think, okay, this is probably more likely benign or not cancerous. Let's just talk treatment. What do you do if you have an ovarian cyst? Well, the first thing we may recommend is nothing. Yes, absolutely nothing. And sometimes we love nothing. This can be an option if we are obviously not worried about cancer. And especially if you are premenopausal, you have no symptoms. Maybe it was just seen, you were getting an ultrasound for your appendix, let's say, and they saw a tiny little two centimeter ovarian cyst. They call it a cyst. You get all freaked out appropriately. So you come see us and we're like, oh yeah, that's probably just where you ovulated from. I'm not super worried about it. We may also not get super worried if it looks like an endometrioma and we know you have endometriosis and right now your condition is okay and you're not dealing with any pain or concerning symptoms. Our other option is we may decide that we're not gonna do anything, but we are gonna keep an eye on it. And so this means that we are going to repeat imaging, which is usually an ultrasound. That's what tends to be best in our field. And we may say, okay, we'll repeat that imaging in three months or six months or a year. It depends on your case. And again, we can really do that if you're premenopausal, we're not worried about cancer. And even if it's, you know, say a six centimeter cyst and you're having no symptoms, we'd rather watch and wait than potentially expose you to the risks of surgery. Which brings me up to my next treatment option, which is yes, surgery. Now the reasons we do surgery is if we're worried about it, that it is cancer or it could be cancer, or if you're symptomatic, if you're in a ton of pain, we can't watch and wait. But not all surgeries are alike and we have to weigh the risks and benefits of surgery. Oftentimes we can do laparoscopic surgery, which means tiny little incisions on the belly. And we use a little camera and tiny tools to be able to remove the cyst or complete the surgery. Other times we do need to make a bigger incision on the belly if we're concerned that it's bigger or we are concerned about cancer. What kind of surgery do we do? Of course it depends, but usually our goal is to remove the cyst and leave the ovary there because 
ovaries do really good things. Not only is it good if you want to have future kids, but it also makes good hormones that keep you healthy. So we try to leave the ovary unless we're really concerned. You might think, well, why can't you just put a needle in and drain the cyst? We could, but we know that those cysts oftentimes just come back. It's like a balloon that you empty and there's still water going into the balloon. So we usually try to shell out the cyst. And if we can't do that, we may remove part of the ovary. If we can't do that, we may need to remove the whole ovary. Now, sometimes we're concerned enough or we're just not quite sure that a regular OBGYN like myself may say, hey, we may need you to go to somebody called a gynecologic oncologist, which is a word and we usually call them our gyn-onc doctors. These are OBGYNs who have specialty training in treating cancers of the ovary, the uterus, the fallopian the vagina, that kind of stuff. And not everybody we refer to them means that they definitely have cancer. It just may be that we're worried or we want their surgical skills on hand in case we find something there and we want them there in the operating room. So I do want you to know if you've been referred to one of these doctors, it may just be for their extra technical skill and not necessarily because we are 100% sure you have cancer. Okay, I've covered the top ovarian cysts and things that can grow in your ovary. Are there specific ones you want me to dive in more like those gross teratomas. And do you want to share your story in the comments about how your case was handled or questions that you have? I can definitely follow them up in other videos or TikToks or Reels or YouTube Shorts. So go ahead, drop your comments and questions below. Follow me on my other social channels. And until next week, stay safe, my friends. Bye-bye.